I guess um, just talk about the beginning of the uh, Big Ten play and uh, just kind of what you've seen out of your team the first four weeks in preparation for the conference play. Uh, the opening of the Big Ten season is always a special moment for me because it's, I've, I've been in the conference for over 25 years now and, uh, and I've grown to, to like it and, and it, uh, as I said, this is a, an important weekend because it's the opener. My, the, the team, the Gopher team is, I think, ready. Uh, what I what I really like about our schedule is we got to play some really close, tough matches, and that gives us the kind of experience we need to face the teams that we're going to see in the Big Ten because they're going to be just that kind of. All of those matches are going to be very similar to San Diego and Northern Iowa and the other tough teams we've played so far. So I, I like that seasoning that we've gathered uh, over the past four weeks. Do, they kind of, do you have uh, some of the younger players kind of use, obviously, what you did in the non-conference along with maybe the experience of some of the other players who played in Big Ten to kind of get them prepared for what, you know, what Big Ten play is, kind of the notch that's raising the intensity level? Well, yeah, that, we would like to have, of course, our seniors on, uh, in the lineup, but they're, they're not there. So we're missing some key pieces when it comes to older, more veteran players teaching the younger kids what it's like to play in the conference and what to expect. Uh, but, that not being the case, we're going to have to rely on people like uh, Ariana Filio, who's our, a junior, or other junior. Actually, we have two others, three others. Uh, Stephanie uh, Nucci, one, uh, our transfer setter from UCLA, is a junior, at least eligibility-wise. Uh, see, Jess Menden, one of our setters, is a junior. Uh, we have some older people, we have, and that's where I think the leadership has to come from as we head into uh, this weekend. I guess um, just talk about the two teams that you have on your slate with Michigan and Michigan State, uh, both very tough places to play. In fact, there's been a couple years recently where that's been maybe one of the toughest road trips because you've got two really solid teams back to back. Yeah, uh, Michigan State is, as I said many times to you, is to me uh, a, a collection of some of the finest athletes in the conference. They, they, they can really play well when they're on a roll. Physical, quick attack system, a good defensive team. Uh, I, I I can't believe they didn't finish higher than they did last year in the conference. So they're they're always difficult for us. I think last year we went in there and got down 2-0 before we came back and won it in five sets. And we haven't won at Michigan and Ann Arbor for four years. Uh, so that kind of tells you uh, what our what our experience has been at, at that particular site. So I, I agree with you. I think this is if one of the toughest, maybe the second or third toughest for the road swings in the Big Ten. I guess um, talk to the uh, quality of the conference so far and non-conference play. It's demonstrated uh, how what a quality conference it is. Um, just kind of talk about top to bottom, really, just every trip being a tough one. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I cringe at having to go to any of these, uh, these places. The, the, the Penn State, Ohio State, Trip is always one of the toughest in the conference. Penn State maybe has uh, lost a match finally after winning a hundred million in a row or whatever it was that they did. Uh, but they're still formidable. And that's going to be difficult. And then if you either uh, leave there and go to Ohio State or go from Ohio State to Penn State, and, and in neither case is there a bargain to be had. Well, because Ohio State is awfully good as well. Uh, when you rank in the top 25, I think, or also getting votes. Uh, and I think uh, the Wisconsin the Illinois trip is going to be awfully difficult. Uh, every time we turn around, we're going to be facing either a top 25 team or a team that's very close to it. Finally, uh, just talk about uh, what you've seen so far out of the team in terms of strengths and weaknesses. What do you feel are some of the strong points that you guys bring in the Big Ten play and uh, some of the things that you feel maybe need to be ironed out as the conference season moves along? To be honest with you, right now I don't see a tr any one thing that's a tremendous strength. Uh, I think we're an aggregate at this point. We, can, we pass pretty well. We serve fairly well. Uh, we can attack the ball you know, with some power. We're a decent blocking team, but there's no one area that we stand out in and think, wow, Pope is going to really do that well. But that's okay. I, I don't mind being a team instead of just a team that has a lot of ability in a lot of areas, as opposed to a team that can only serve something like that. Uh, it, it remains to be seen how, how well we'll be able to gel and put all those things together here in the conference. Um, weaknesses, uh, right now I would say uh, 
setting is still a question mark. Uh, I think uh, our top layer serving is a little weak right now. We, we haven't really served people off the court yet, and we need to do that in the top to be successful. But again, at this point, we're, we're just not, we haven't gelled as a team yet. I'll be able to, probably in two or three weeks, be able to tell you, we'll give you a little more accurate answer to that question. Thanks, Mike, and good luck this weekend. Thank you, Steve. Cool.